This is the first of two videos about threads, events and delegates. I'm going to show you how to build this simple racing game with VB.net, but before I begin let me point out some of the features. I have two squares racing from one end of the course to the other. Their movement is randomised, so you can't predict which one will win. The two squares are moving independently of each other because the procedures that paint them onto the form are running on separate threads. There's a running commentary at the bottom of the form telling me who's in the lead during the race. The procedure controlling this is also running on a separate thread. It's triggered by an event which is raised whenever one square overtakes the other. I can interact with the form during the race to place a bet because the form controls are also running on separate threads. When the race is over, another event is raised to tell me who won. The squares are frozen in place for a photo finish, my winnings or losses are calculated and the bank is updated. By following along and building this application yourself, you'll come to see that threads, events and delegates are closely related. If you're a C-sharp programmer, you might still find these videos useful. Although there are some differences in language syntax, the fundamental concepts are all the same. To get the most out of this video, you should already be familiar with the basics of high-level programming. It will also be an advantage if you have some understanding of object-oriented programming. I've made a sequence of videos about OOP, which you can watch if you need to. This is Visual Studio 2022, and I'm going to create a Windows Forms application. If you're following along, make sure that you select Windows Forms App .NET Framework so that your project will have access to all of the code libraries that you're going to need. I want to change the size of the form to make it suitable for a race course. And I'm going to place a button in the top left corner, which I'll use to start the race. Now, I'm going to write a procedure to create the illusion of a red box moving across the screen. And I'm going to draw a red box using the graphics object. I'll need a brush. And now I'm going to call the fill rectangle method of the graphics object. Passing it the brush, where I want to draw the rectangle in relation to the top left corner of the form and how big I want the rectangle to be. If you want to know more about the graphics object, you could watch my sequence of videos in which I create a colour mixer application. I talk about the graphics object, pens, brushes and the like in those videos. I'm going to make sure this is working before I continue. So far so good. Now, I want the X position of my red box to vary, so I'm going to replace the X position with a variable. And now I'm going to vary it within a loop. Let's see what happens now. What I'd like to do is have a pause within the loop each time I draw a red box. I'm putting the main form thread to sleep for 20 milliseconds each time I pass through the loop. I'll say more about the main form thread a little bit later. But it's starting to look more like an animation. I need to erase the previous red square before drawing the next one. You can't actually erase something from a form, you have to paint over it. So I'm going to need another brush, the same colour as the form. I'm picking up the background colour of the form, which I'm referring to as me. And now to draw over each red square before drawing the next one. And we'll test it again. That's more like it. 
I want to introduce some randomness to the movement of this red box, or it won't be much of a competition when I have two boxes racing each other. So I'm going to declare a random object. And I'm going to do it at the form level because I want to use it in more than one program. R.next will generate a random number. 20 is now the maximum size of that random number. I'll use it here as well. A little less predictable. I can change these values to change the pace of the race. I've slowed things down a little bit. Let's say a little bit more about this. Thread.sleep will pause the current thread. Every application has at least one thread. In this case, it's the thread that was created when I launched the application. We call it the primary thread. I might also refer to it as the form thread. I think I want to replace these values with constants so I can more easily change them. I'm retesting my application every step of the way, just to make sure I haven't introduced any new bugs. Finally, I'd like to draw a red square outside of this loop. So I can still see it on the form when the race is over. OK, I need a blue box now. And this is very easy. I just need to copy the procedure I've already written and make a few minor changes. I want my blue box further down the form. So I need to change those Y values as well. Let's make sure it works. And that's fine. Now, to run both procedures, red box and blue box, at the same time, it couldn't be simpler. First, I'll declare a couple of object variables, each of type thread. T1 and T2. I'm declaring them at the form level because different programs will need access to these later. Now I'll create two new thread objects. And then I'll start the threads. The address of clause is used to indicate which procedure I want to run on that new thread. Let's see what happens now. Two boxes running randomly at the same time. The race, as they say, is on. Now is probably a good time to say what a thread actually is. If you think of a process as an application that's currently running, then a thread can be defined as a unit of execution within a process. You might also hear a thread described as a flow of control within a process, or the smallest sequence of programmed instructions that can be managed independently by a scheduler. All of these descriptions are correct, but to put it simply, having multiple threads allows an application to perform multiple operations at the same time. You can effectively have several subroutines running simultaneously. I use the word effectively because each CPU core can only execute one program instruction at a time. So if you have lots of applications running at once, that is lots of processes, and each process has multiple threads, then the threads have to be time sliced in a round robin fashion to create the illusion of concurrent processing. To enable this, each thread is given its own execution stack. 
You can find out more about how the CPU works, how memory is managed, and how process threads are scheduled by watching some of my other videos. As a programmer, it certainly helps to have a feel for what's going on at the hardware level while your code is running. Take a look at the Task Manager on my PC. On the Performance tab, I can see that I've got 216 processors running at the same time, and over 3,000 different threads. In my application, there are currently three threads at play. The red box program, the blue box program, and the program that created the form, the primary thread. The primary thread was created for me by the .NET framework, but the system.threading.thread class allows me, the programmer, to create and manage additional threads. When I call the start method of a thread object, T1 for example, I'm actually making use of a thread start delegate. In fact, I could have written this one line of code more explicitly like this. You can see it still works. I could have also done this. The syntax is a bit different, but I'm doing the same thing. Let me clarify what's meant by a delegate. You should already know that you can define a procedure or a function with parameters, so that when you call it, you can effectively say, here is some data that I want you to work with. If you've ever coded in C++, you might have come across the concept of a function pointer. In C++, you can write a function that expects to be passed a reference to another function as a parameter, so that when you call it, you're effectively saying, here's a function I want you to call for me. A delegate is .NET's answer to a function pointer. A delegate object is actually a container for a function pointer, or to put that more correctly, it's a container for a method pointer, because a method can be a function or a procedure. In this case, OThreadStart is a delegate object. It's an instance of the ThreadStart class. It's actually an intermediary, a middleman if you like, between the program being called, in this case the red box procedure, and the program that's making the call, in this case the program that runs when I click on my button. Why the middleman? Well, behind the scenes, the thread start delegate takes care of all the necessary plumbing to ensure that Redbox runs on a separate thread. A delegate needs to know the memory address of the first instruction of the method that it's delegating for. Redbox and Bluebox are each allocated some memory space in which to run when the application is launched. This is within the memory space allocated to the application process as a whole. That is what I'm specifying here with the address of clause. The memory location of the first instruction of the Redbox procedure. The entry point of the new thread. I'm going to put this back to the way it was. Although this shorthand obscures some of what's really going on, I think it's more intuitive. I don't actually need to concern myself with the machinations of delegates. I can just say, hey, .NET, run this program for me on a new thread. But you can see here from the IntelliSense that I am actually using a thread start delegate. T1 and T2 are known as worker threads. They are currently running independently of each other, like two different artists painting on the same canvas at the same time. The form itself is running on a separate thread. T1 and T2 were spawned by the main form thread, which means they are its children. If the parent form thread was to suddenly end, then so would its children. Now I'm going to write some code to clean up the form between races, and I want to draw a finish line as well.
that should clear everything off the form. And that will draw me a finish line. I'm also going to use the form shown event to set the starting positions of my two boxes. And we'll put the finish line on there for the start as well. This program will run as soon as the form hits the screen. So my race is ready to go.